grade six, I was vying for the gold medal in the annual St. Jude Catholic School Spelling Bee. In these same halls, I was up against my good friend Danny, and the word was femme fatale. I knew this word. I had studied it before in my dog-eared dictionary. I remember exactly that it meant sexy, dangerous lady in French. Well, in my haste and I guess overconfidence, however, I forgot to spell it with a letter E at the end. Needless to say, I never quite forgot that. It perhaps is the most acute memory that I have of failure, one that remains vivid until today. When we talk about failure, we often do so with much less fervor and much less excitement than its more marketed sibling, success. But failure is not taboo. Failure is not a fault. To fail is actually to indulge at a first attempt in learning, without which we wouldn't be able to progress even further. When I graduated from St. Jude, I was over the moon to be accepted into my dream school, the Ateneo. However, I had nothing to my name. I wasn't a merit scholar. I wasn't even part of the director's list, which is top 2% of the examinees. I had nothing but a pitiful merit English class enrollment under my name. Lesser decorated classmates and friends got more, got farther, and in my head, yes, hashtag first world problems, I felt like was a failure. I stared down so many silent questions from relatives and friends whose eyes seemed to bore into my soul asking, so what happened to you? I thought you were smart. I felt like my alternative theory that intellect and luck was finite was finally coming true and that mine was running out. I started getting low grades. I got my first F in my biology long test. My mother in the audience would remember me crying to her after taking the LRT on the ride home. I was thinking to myself, I was such a small fish in a big pond. I wish, I wish I could just turn back time. I felt like I just wasn't good enough, that perhaps I never was. When people asked me where I graduated from, I would always say St. Jude, but I would be very careful not to talk about my past achievements lest they judge me for my current lack of them. In the same way, we tend to keep quiet whenever we have a job application coming up or a competition in the works. I kept quiet because I let my fear of failure rule me. I'd like to ask the audience to indulge me for a moment. Show of hands, please. Who among you here want to succeed? Who among you here want to fail? Who among you here fear success? And who among you here fear failure? Ladies and gentlemen, the show of hands is already a case in point. When we talk about failure, we often talk about it with muchness, uh, with a lot of negativity, with a lot of apprehension and a lot of anxiety. But we forget that failure is actually good. People ask me often, what have you failed at, JC? And I answer them a lot. This is actually an, a picture of a post-it that's been stuck to my bathroom wall for the last five years. I first put it up there when I was abjectly failing at my first job out of college. But if you think about it, failure is good because it grounds you. It motivates you to do better. It reminds you that you're not invincible. It doesn't really matter how large your definition of failure is or what how you define it, what matters is your reaction to this lack of success. Do you shirk from it or do you embrace it? Do you run away from it or do you let yourself be enveloped by it? Do you step into the fire of failure, allowing yourself to be forged into a better you? It, I guess I've, I haven't failed at the magnitude that people expect me to or perhaps hope I would but I have failed quite often enough to form this principle which has guided me until today. Fear, pointless failure, and fear, easy success. When I was in the second semester of my fresh, freshman year in Ateneo, a really smart classmate of mine asked me, he was from Ateneo High, a boy. He asked me, so young, what QPI did you get? So out of four, with four being the highest rather, your QPI or your quality point index 
encompasses your worth as a human person, or at least as a student studying in the academy. The overachievers in the audience would know exactly what I mean. I was young, I was naive. I blithely and even joyfully answered him with it, uh, saying, I got 3.16, what about you? For the record, 3.16 is not super horrible. It's between B, B plus. But for my friend who got something close to four, he looked me up and down as if seeming to assess my worthiness to be in his presence. And he just replied with a deadpan voice, ah, 3.16 ka lang? That statement stirred so many feelings in me that I didn't know I had. That spurred me to do so much better the next semester. It drove me to get 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, all the way until graduation, when it was between me and him for a couple of awards. And when we were up on that stage, and when we were actually having our photo taken together, he congratulated me, and I turned to him and seriously and profusely thanked him for what he's done. To say he was surprised is an understatement. He didn't even remember that we had that encounter four years ago. But that's what I mean by having success or fearing easy success because having success come easy doesn't do you any favors. It doesn't teach you about resilience, that muscle that you need to work on in order to get stronger at it. It doesn't teach you about hard work. It doesn't teach you about that what got you here will not be the same sets of skills and abilities that will get you to the next step. And worse, it teaches you that life is a bed of roses when it's not. Look around at all the people who've had life throw them curveballs. Wasn't their motivation higher than the average? Fear pointless failure and fear easy success. I have an admission to make. I'm, a, I'm actually a very frustrated writer. I can't recall the number of times that I've passed a literary piece to the publications in college only to never really realize my dream of seeing my name on print. I, it wasn't until I saw the first test print of my first book at the publisher that I realized I had failed because I didn't give so much of myself in it. I recycled assignments that were written for English class. I passed first drafts written in language for inspiration, but I never really took the time to hone my writing craft even further. Unlike the eight months, that I spent researching, writing, reading, editing, revising, and rewriting this labor of love of ours with my co-author and mentor, Rhea, which was by no means an easy feat for two women who had too little time on their hands as it is. But even moments of success are neither perfect nor permanent. This is the actual table of contents that went out to print. And can you spot the knot? It's a bit small, uh, but as a grammar Nazi, I take particular pride in everything that I write or everything that goes through me. It makes me cringe, however, every single time that I realize or that I remember, I painstakingly went through every single page subsequent to this table of contents just to make sure that formatting was perfect, grammar was correct, punctuation and spelling were at par, only failing to undergo quality check on the one page I'm pretty sure everyone who bought my book would get to. I, got, I spelled classification with an extra I. The point is we will always make mistakes and we will always make failures, but the idea is not to keep count of how many you've wrapped up in your life, no matter how long or short it is. The idea is to make them count every single time to remember it and to not repeat it, to make it work for you instead of the other way around. I'm a fan of quotes, so allow me to share with you a personal favorite of mine, and I think Sir Audi has already alluded to it earlier. It's your attitude, not your aptitude, that determines your altitude. This was spoken by Zig Ziglar. For the longest time, I just thought that this was the proverbial battle between EQ and IQ. You know how, how we place such a huge importance on technical skills, over, overpowering people skills, but at the end of the day, it's really your soft skills that went out at the end. It wasn't until after five years in the workforce that this adage or this maxim has taken on a completely new meaning for me. I don't think I was invited to speak before you here today because I'm the greatest failure nor success St. Jude Catholic School has ever produced. I do think I'm here to tell you, however, that neither success nor failure is an end state. 
Rather, they're simply the catalysts or the pivotal moments from which we must always ask ourselves, so what? What now? How do I move on? Or how do I move forward? Because the minute you start resting on your laurels for the people who are enjoying a bit of success at this point in their lives, the minute you rest on your laurels, you allow your, someone else to creep up behind you and beat you. If, on the other hand, you feel like you have some improvements to make, and you realize, or the second, that rather, that you second guess yourself, you don't allow yourself that responsibility and that chance to dust yourself off and try again. I implore the youth of today two things. Forget your successes right away, but never ever forget your failures. Undocumented, unglamorous, the staying power of your failures far surpasses and is far more potent than any other frame certificate, shiny medal, or heavy trophy that they bestow upon you. As I always tell my kids or the, peop the people I'm privileged to mentor, you're only as good as your last success, but you're already always better than your last failure. When I was in grade six, I was vying for the gold medal in the annual spelling bee. In these very halls, I was just about to spell the word femme fatale, but I forgot to spell it with the letter E at the end. I never quite forgot that because I didn't get to have my name published on the Chimes yearbook as how I would have wanted it to, perhaps because it was the most acute failure that I remember, perhaps more so because I purposively made it into my first Yahoo email address, very much active until today, just so I never do forget. Thank you very much.